Well, here's an interesting and I guess timeless uh, question. It is, did Shakespeare really write Shakespeare? Well, for many years there's been a debate among scholars, actors, and simple folk like myself as to whether Shakespeare really is the author of the wonderful plays in his name. Uh, I have recently become acquainted with a data source called the Declaration of Reasonable Doubt, championed by the actors Mark Rylance and Derek Jacoby, which questions Shakespeare's authorship. But I also encountered the final chapter, Claimants, in Bill Bryson's Shakespeare book, in which he staunchly, staunchly defends the Stratfordian position, that is the position that it was Shakespeare who did indeed write the plays. Both sources are compelling, uh, and, and, and why should we care anyway? Why do all these people invest so much time in staking out a position? The, the stunning artistic accomplishment of Shakespeare's or, or whoever's <laughs> plays is so much a part of our lives, our language, even our philosophy, that we would have to be dead between the ears not to care. This is a really heated and vital subject, so let's get into it. Okay, let's start out by saying, yes, uh, Shakespeare did write his plays. Well, a, a pretty <laughs> positive piece of information is that his name is actually on a number of the early editions of his plays, and especially on the famous first folio. That was the uh, document which for the first time brought them all together. Now, how else could that be if someone else had written them? Uh, a number of contemporary actors at the time acknowledged him as a playwright and a friend and said that. Uh, this is first-hand evidence from uh, people who were there. Uh, Samuel Johnson, the famous producer of the first important dictionary and, and great pundit, uh, remarked that Shakespeare's genius lay not in his erudition, but in his vigilance of observation and accuracy of distinction, which books and precepts cannot confer from this all original and native excellence proceeds. <laughs> well, that's quite an endorsement. Uh, the doubts about his, his having attended grammar school, which I'll mention uh, in the second section, <laughs> uh, where he might well have learned much of the science and literary canon used in his work, it, that's misplaced. It, it's quite likely that despite the lack of confirming records, he did in fact attend the local grammar school. In uh, 1987, three justices of the American Supreme Court convened a one-day moot court to hear the Oxfordian case, that is, the attribution of the plays to William de Vere, the Earl of Oxford. Literary experts were not to be represented. Uh, they, they, he, they just wanted sensible people talking common sense. <laughs> The justices determined that the case was based on a conspiracy theory and that the reasons given for this conspiracy were incoherent and unpersuasive. A retrial was organized the next year in the United Kingdom and it was presided over by three law lords. The outcome was the same. It confirmed the American verdict. The New York Times did a survey in 2007 of 265 American Shakespeare professors on this whole authorship question. And when asked their opinion of, of the topic, 62% chose a theory without evidence and 32% chose a waste of time and distraction. In 1987, a computer-based analysis of Shakespeare's uh, plays and those of his claimants were con was conducted. The result determined that none of the other tested claimants work could have been written by Shakespeare, nor could Shakespeare have been written by them, eliminating all of the claimants whose known works have survived, in other words, so that they could be analyzed, including Oxford, uh, that of Francis Bacon, and also that of Christopher Marlowe, as, as the true authors of the, of the Shakespeare canon. And finally, advocates of other possible writers of the plays have amassed no direct evidence for their position, only conjecture. So, uh, the case for Shakespeare himself having written the plays, it's pretty good, it's pretty strong. 
Well, what about those who say, no, he did not. In fact, the evidence is uh, just the other way around. It says that someone else did. First of all, all the evidence is that Shakespeare was an uneducated man from an uneducated family. His parents and children were illiterate, and there's no record of his having attended the grammar school in Stratford, which has been claimed for him, so there's obviously a disagreement about that. Uh, there's no evidence for Shakespeare's ever having received the technical and university level training that would have been needed for him to have demonstrated such remarkable facility in law and science, geography, classical languages, uh, history, and so forth. The two universities in England at the time, Oxford and Cambridge, kept good records about who attended and there's no record for Shakespeare. So he, he didn't go to university. Next is his famous will, his detailed will in which, uh, unforgettably, he left his wife, quote, my second best bed with the furniture, end quote. Uh, uh, that will contains no clearly Shakespearean turn of phrase. It mentions no books, plays, poems, or literary effects of any kind. Kind of surprising for a man of his accomplishment not to have put some of that uh, as a bequest to uh, people who he cared about. Anti-Stratfordians consider Shakespeare's background incompatible with that attributable to the Shakespearean canon, which exhibits an intimacy with court politics and culture, foreign countries, aristocratic sports such as hunting, falconry, tennis, and lawn bowling. How would he know any of that stuff, having never been anywhere near any of it? Uh... There are also reasons proposed for the use of Shakespeare as a pseudonym for some people uh, to hide their true identity. Uh, now, those reasons tend to vary depending on the social status of the candidate. Uh, aristocrats such as William Stanley, the Earl of Derby, and also Oxford, the Earl of Oxford, supposedly use pseudonyms because of a prevailing uh, stigma of print, a social convention that uh, restricted their literary works to private and courtly audiences as opposed to commercial endeavors at the risk of social disgrace if violated. And further, there's no evidence that Shakespeare ever even left England, whereas all but one of his plays take place abroad, especially in Italy and in France. No plays attributed to him have ever been found in handwriting. Uh, the likelihood that he did not write his plays is strengthened by the number of distinguished scholars, actors, writers, and academicians who believe uh, that uh, it was somebody else who wrote the plays. People like Hugh Trevor Roper, Derek Jacobi, Mark Rylance, Nathaniel Hawthorne, Mark Twain, two Supreme Court Justices of the United States, Walt Whitman, Sigmund Freud, and even Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh. Well, what's my take on all of this? Well, I'm afraid I have difficulty taking a firm position on this one. Uh, the reasons and facts used to bolter, bolster the doubter's position, well, they're arresting, they're interesting, but they seem reasonably well answered by the Stratfordians. My biggest concern when I first thought about this was the, the lack of education as a basis for all the literary and scientific knowledge demonstrated in the plays, which would have been available to him probably in his local grammar school. Uh, I now think it's highly likely that he actually did attend one. So that kind of removed my biggest concern. For me, the ultimate conclusion is still uncertain. It could go either way, but uh, but if pressed, I would vote for Will as the author. <laughs> Sorry about that. If you liked it, the usual, please give me a like, subscribe, comment, notify, and I'll see you at the next one. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.